Okay. So, our Torah versus Halakha today is on Amen. Should we use this word or not? Hmm. So a funny thing happened while we were in Virginia and Rabbi was doing his teaching. When we go to Virginia, when Rabbi does his teaching, they always set aside some time for me to do something. Either they have me um, working with the children, doing something with the children, or they'll have me do this year, they actually had me do, which was really cool, um, a midrash between Rabbi's teachings because he went in on in the morning and we were there all day. So when we go to Virginia, that's a real working weekend for us where we are going to the ministry, teaching, dealing with people, and then go, we're there all day. So since we were, he had a, a teaching that morning um, and a teaching that evening, we broke and had um, Oneg, uh, a meal fellowship, and then we came back together and did a little short midrash. And the thing that was so funny, and I praise Father Yahweh that they, they feel that I have the ability to do that just off the um, cuff, but they said that people could ask any question that they wanted to ask. So that's interesting. So they didn't give, you know, a, it, leave it, keep it with the Torah portion or keep it with the teaching that, that Rabbi was doing. They just threw it out there as a blanket statement and said, whatever question you, if you have a burning question within you, then this is your time to ask. So I'm standing there and a woman raises her hand and she says, and I'm thinking to myself, okay, Father, y'all, uh, help us sister out. Whatever they throw out there, I'm just gonna give it to me where, where I can um, deal with it intelligibly in the Torah um, and that it be pleasing to you. So a lady raised her hand and she said, I noticed that when you prayed earlier, you didn't say amen, but you said hallelujah. Should we not say amen? I thought to myself, why would she ask me that? Why didn't she ask her pastor? who was sitting right there in the audience. <laughs> I started to say, Pastor Green, would you like to answer that question? But Pastor Green couldn't answer the question for me because she pointed it towards me because she heard me pray a prayer and I said, let the people of Yahweh say, hallelujah. I didn't say amen. I have, for the record, I have nothing against amen, nothing. But it did throw me into some things that I have been studying some years ago. And so I said, well, Father, y'all, you know, this is a great topic for Torah versus Halakha. Because we have a large group of people who are Hebrew who no longer say amen because of there's a reason. And we're going to get into it. And that's why. I wanted to bring this up so you all could see it. And you know, because we are a learning center, we're always here and ready, should be ready to be taught. So this is what Father Yahweh gave me and some of the studies that I've gone through myself in the past few years concerning this word, amen. And the people say, amen. Okay, now when I do that, y'all say, amen. And the people say, Amen. Okay, hallelujah. So, this word, Amen, is used 79 times, 73 verses, from Numbers to Revelation. The only books it's not found in is Bereshit, Shemoth, and Lyra, Genesis, Exodus, and uh, uh, Leviticus. But throughout Deuteronomy, it is preceded by, and all the people shall say, Amen. The Torah itself, 
the uh, the word is used in the Torah itself. The word is used fourteen times in the book of Numbers twice, and the rest is in Devarim. But interesting in the book of Numbers where it uses it, it's in our Torah portion this week, which is Numbers five. Talks about it's twenty two. Talks about uh, the uh, laws of jealousy. The Torah of jealousy. And when a man thinks that his wife is having an affair and he gets a spirit of jealousy on him. So then she has to go. They have to go before the priest. The words of, the, of that Torah are swept off into the water. Dust where she stands from there is put in the water. She is told that if she has not been faithful, that her belly will swell and her thigh will rot. If she is innocent, then she will bring forth children. That will be the blessing to her. So as we see that, then the woman has to say, Amen, Amen. That's the place where it is, double. So we're going to look at this word and we're going to, you know, I love to get into the origin and etymology of words because that's where you get your understanding. It's hard to um, look at a word that was actually um, created. You know, you guys know I always say this. What did the word gay mean 50 years ago? Happy. Happy. Joyous. Oh, he's a gay fellow. Oh, she is so happy and gay all the time. You don't want to say that now because it means something totally different. So words, meanings of words change. So because of that, because society changes, um, the actual word itself doesn't change. It's that the meaning of it changes over time. So we're going to look at this word, amen. And as you see, the word amen, Brown Drivers Briggs, and also Strong's Concordance, the word means verily, truly, amen, so be it. Um, the root word of this, Aleph Nun, uh, Aleph Mem Nun, uh, is Brown Drivers Briggs 539. And the word is uh, all man. And it means to support, to confirm, to be faithful, to um, nourish, to uphold, as in a foster father or foster mother. It means uh, pillars or supporters of the door to be established, to be faithful, to be carried, make firm to be carried by a nurse. Sure, lasting, confirmed, established, I said that already, reliable, trusty, to trust, to believe in, so to be certain. So with that word, amen, it was actually pronounced from the scripture, what it sounds like phonetically, all main, as in a horse's mane. So all and main is how it was originally spoken. So the word amen is Old English from a late Latin amen, from a ecclesiastical Greek amen, from Hebrew. So they're taking it back. Latin, it was Hebrew, then it was Greek, then it became, was translated into Latin. Hebrew, a man meaning truth, used um, adverbally as an expression of agreement. And then we see that at, in Deuteronomy 2, 15 through 26. That's what I was telling you about, about the laws of jealousy. Also in 1 Kings 1, 36, from a Semitic root, Aleph Mem Nun, A-M-N, to be trustworthy, 
confirm or support. And I pulled that information directly from Etymology Online. And so that gave us the gave me the root of the uh, word. Now let's look at the word from um, the Aleph Bet standpoint. So we're going to look at it as the Aleph Mem and Nun. The Aleph is the ox head. Um, the ox head being the first letter of the Hebrew Aleph Bet, which means head of the sacrificial system. The ox was the largest sacrificial system that you, or uh, largest sacrifice that you could give in the sacrificial system. And then you have master, uh, strength, uh, power, or leader. And its uh, gametra value is one. And then you have mem, which is water. What it also, the mem also means chaos. It can mean mighty. It can mean, when you talk about mem, you think about the mighty waters. You think about also blood. Uh, we know that uh, water is the life force of the earth. It flows. Just like they talk about the Mississippi River being the longest river in the United States, that it is the blood vein of the, or the blood artery of the South. So you have this river that gives life to everything else around it. Why? Because it's water. Water is living. So that's why we call Yeshua the, the Hayim Mayim, the living waters, Mayim Hayim, waters that live. Because he said himself that I am the living waters. Hallelujah. Then we have the noon, which the noon means seed or sun or air. Now, mem, uh, its gametra value is 40. And then uh, noon, uh, meaning seed or sun or air, uh, has a gametra value of 50. So we have all together. A complete, uh, if you, you know, add them together, you got 90, 91. And then uh, if you, 91, if you add the 9 and the 1 together, you got 10, which takes you back to 1. So the, the word being amen, denoting um, trustworthiness. And we know who is trustworthy. Father Yahweh. Hallelujah. And what is also trustworthy? His word. Absolutely, he spoke it. He said, my word has gone forth out of my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish wherein it has been sent. So if we look at that, then uh, the, the letter with a gametra value of 100 is the letter kof. Everybody say kof. 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 And the kof has a pictorial value of as the sun on the horizon. And see how it looks. That's why I put the little horizon there. Um, the, so you've got the, the this is paleo. And that's what the kof looks like. So that's what it meant. It's uh, sun on the horizon. And it means to be condensed or circle or of time, which would make sense because we know what time it is when the sun is going down on the horizon or when the sun is coming up on the horizon. You know, it's almost day and then it's almost night. So let's look at the Amen pronunciation. Now, these are the ways that I've heard Amen pronounced. I've heard it pronounced amen. I've heard it pronounced amen. I've heard it pronounced umain. I've heard it pronounced umin. I've heard it pronounced amen. So we're going to look at this amen um, in Hebrew, uh, namely to mean so be it, as it states as we saw in the word, the uh, definition of the word. Now the root of the word comes from the Hebrew amen, as I said, which means to nourish, make strong. Also emunah, which is faithfulness, also comes from this word at H539, 
Uh, amen. It also comes from that word, emuna, to be faithful, which makes sense because what we're talking about here, we're talking when we say oh, amen, we're talking about something trust. Yes, I agree. That's true. It's faithful. Okay? So looking at that word, we're saying from a Hebrew standpoint, surely, truthfully, absolutely. It is one of just a few Hebrew words which have been imported and chained, unchanged into church liturgy. That other word is hallelujah. The only difference, the only thing that they did do, they didn't change the pronunciation of hallelujah, but they changed the Y to a J. That was done in the 1700s. Before the 1700s, there was not a J in the English language. And it's interesting because I said that to my father, and he said, what in the world? How did they get? And he stopped. Hmm, interesting. Yes, I knew what he was going to say. How did you get the name Jesus? Yes. The current meaning of amen and its pronunciation is pretty much the same in any modern language and religion. Now this I didn't I didn't know. Facts about the word amen. Okay. Christians say amen or amen. And if you're from the south, then you say amen. Amen. I think that's how you say it. I'm not a really good southern speaker, but anyway, I sound just like myself no matter what language I'm trying to speak. Jamaican, French, Spanish, everything all sounds the same. Like a little Chinese lady. Okay. The amen pronunciation tends to be a bit more formal and used in liturgy, choral music, etc. An example can be heard in the closing part of Handel's Messiah. Worthy is the Lamb. Amen. Amen. Then it gives you a whole lit uh, 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 liturgy of amens at the end. In the final chorus, it is repeated dozens of times, runs to six pages in a typical chorus sc choral score, and usually takes around three minutes and 40 seconds to sing, singing that amen. So now, amen pronunciation is often associated with evangelical Christians and gospel singing. Unlike Handel's Messiah, the gospel chorus, amen, has only five words, all the same, amen, 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 yet can take much longer to perform as it is repeated over and over again, bringing the congregation into harmony. Judaism. For Hebrews, they say Jews, um, amen is also an acronym for El Melech Neiman, uh, which means mighty faithful king. Then we have Islam. Muslims use amen Amin or Amin in the same way as Christians and Hebrews, even though the word does not appear in the Quran. Muslims, Muslims say it after reciting Surah al Fatiha, after completing their prayers at the end of the letters, etc., etc., etc. Then we have Buddhism. Hindus and Buddhists also use amen at the end of prayers and as concurrence in the same way as the other religions. So you've got Buddhism and Hinduism that also uses this word amen. So, you know, let's remember why we're going through this study. Should we say amen? Should we not say amen? That's the whole point to this study. Now, the reason why you have Hebrews who do not like to use the word amen is because of this person on the screen or this 
Egyptian god on the screen. And his name, first part of his name was pronounced Amon, also spelled Amun, Amen, or Amon. He's an Egyptian deity who was revered as king, as the Egyptian king of the gods. And it me the name means hidden one. It's pronounced as it appears on the screen, not as a man it normally, but it's, it's spelled and pronounced Amun. It is believed by those practicing Egyptology that he is the king of all their gods and is the most worshipped ruler. Amun's name meant the hidden one and is and his image was painted blue to denote invisibility. This um, attribute of invisibility led to a popular belief during the New Kingdom in the knowledge and impartiality of a moon, making him a god for those who felt oppressed. So this is the reason that a lot of Hebrews that have studied out the word itself don't like to use the word amen because it relates, they believe it relates to this, um, this God. But as we go forward, Yahweh says, in all that I have said to you, take heed and make no mention of the name of other mighty ones. Let it not be heard from your mouth. Now that's in Exodus 23 and 13. So that pronunciation of the name is why you will have some who will not say amen. And they command others to do the same. But then let's, uh, and, and this is really the end of my um, of this portion because it's written in the Torah the word itself is in the Torah so if Father Yahweh tells us to read and to study the Torah then you have this word all main that's plopped right smack in the middle of the Torah so do you not read it because it sounds like some other Egyptian um, deity? Is that in any way, because Father Yahweh tells us and we read this every Shabbat, everybody read with me the first um, commandment. I am Yahweh your Elohim, you have no other mighty ones against my face. So he tells us to not have any other deities before him. Does he tell us that there are no other deities? No. Does he ever tell us that? No. no. Mm -mm. He never tells us that. Because you know, there are other gods that, they, that the people have had. Are they less than him? Yes. What he's telling us, don't have them above him. Don't have them next to him. Don't have them in, in any way, shape, form, or fashion, any way, make them as great as him. That's what he tells us. Not saying that it's okay to call out this person, this um, deity's name or whatever the case is. But I brought that up so that we can see how people are trying to make an argument concerning not saying the word amen. No matter how you pronounce it, the bottom line to the whole argument is it doesn't change the spelling of those three letters. Aleph, Mem, Nun, period. It's sort of like I take it as um, Father Yahweh's name. When people start getting into these battles and debates about his name is it's it's not Yahweh, but it's Yahuwah, it's Yahuwah, it's Yahuwah, it's Yahuwah, it's a, you know, all of these different ways of pronouncing. But the bottom line is, is that his name is comprised of only four letters. Yod, hey, vav, hey. 
No, not one of us have lived long enough in order to hear the prophet Moshe speak his name as he came down from the Mount of Sinai and gave the tablets of the Torah to the people of Yahweh. No one heard that. And if the person is still walking around today, please look at this YouTube and come and let us know how we should pronounce this name. <laughs> So we get, and just like we cannot get caught up on the pronunciation, whether we are definitely pronouncing it correctly or not, is the name of Yahweh important? Absolutely, absolutely it is. And I believe it is for a time that he will reveal the correct pronunciation. And I think that a whole lot of people are going to be surprised that they're going to be wrong. Absolutely. I think by the time Yeshua gets here, and after he says, we all gather together, he's going to say, every last one of y'all, sit your hind parts down because none of y'all had it right. When we start thinking that we are so special, that we are so intellectual, even if you're a linguist, you only have four letters to deal with in the Torah. Pronounce those four letters. So it's the same thing with this word amen. There's only three letters. Aleph, Mem, Nun. So am I against saying amen after a prayer? I tend to, you know, err on the side of caution. That's just my personality. I didn't I didn't I didn't roller skate because I wasn't sure, you know. You know, when I was a kid, I still don't know how to roller skate. Because I was just like, you know what? Mm -mm. Those little roller things, balls underneath there, that's just, that's not secure enough. I feel a little bit too wobbly. Mm -mm. I, I can't do it. I know enough about swimming to not drown. I'm fine with that. As long as I just don't put me out in a big bunch of water like the ocean, I probably won't have a chance. But I... I tend to err on the side of caution. So sometimes you will hear me say, and let the people of Yahweh say, hallelujah. Because that name is safe. Yeah. That word is safe. I know that word is right. So, <laughs> so what this, but to make a statement concerning Torah, we cannot say that concerning Torah, saying a man denotes that you're speaking of an Egyptian um, God, because that's not absolutely true. Especially looking at it from um, at the um, et etymology of the word, and then also from those three letters that we can just try to pronounce it the best that we can. And so that's, that's um, what we have, hallelujah. Not a word. Hallelujah. It's too late to start again And I'm sure I'm you In the hands of the Creator I'm not enough to salvage And I'm not